Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial we're going to go over part four of our groundhog character. So, um, last time we went in and added his particle fur and uh, texture map and all that. So now we're ready to give him a skeleton, give him a rig so we can move him around. Before I do that, I want to kind of rearrange my scene a little bit here. So I'm going to hit A to grab everything and then just drag it up until we're above that red line. So we're actually on top of the middle of the scene rather than the head being there. So um, let's give a ground plane, give him a ground plane. Let's just add a new plane in here. This makes for a better render for just testing purposes. And on this new ground plane, let's add a new material. It's going to be shadow only. Oh, spell only correctly. <laughs> Only. There we go. And let's go all the way down to the bottom to the shadows section and say shadows only right there. Then we'll come back up here. And under shading, we want to turn ambient all the way down. That'll allow the ground plane to have a shadow thrown on it, even with ambient occlusion turned on. So if we look through our camera now. One other thing we can do is grab the, the lamp here. And over here, remember we set it to be buffered shadow, so it would render the the particle fur shadows quite a bit better. There's one thing we can do on top of that that'll make it look even better. So let me do a quick render here so we can see a difference. I'll pause the recorder so you don't have to sit here and wait for it to render. Okay, and there's that. And you can see the fur looks nice and soft. You can feels like you, or it looks like you can just reach in there and just tickle his belly or something. But uh, if we set the bias, let's go and escape out of here. Grab the lamp and go to our lamp settings. Uh, the bias settings here, if we make that 0.25 or so, the individual particles in here will stand out even further. So let me go ahead and render this one. And again, I'll pause the recorder and you can compare this one with the, the next one that will have the buffered shadows turned down a little bit. So stand by. Okay, and you can see the difference there. Uh, you can actually see more of the fur rather than just a little bit in here. So you can play with those settings if you like. If you like the way it looked before, well, just leave the, the bias up. And then if you like this better, well, there you go. That's how you do that. So that being said, let's go ahead and start working on, on, the, um, on the armature there. What, what I want to use is uh, this another add-on that Nathan Vegdahl uh, of, of the Big Buck Bunny and uh, Sintel fame, he created this add-on called Rigify. So we're going to go to user preferences and just go in, in your search box, just type in rig and it'll pop up these results here and just go ahead and check that check mark, check box there for rigging rigify. And there we go. So now when we hit the shift A to add an armature, we have the option to add the human meta rig and adds it in there. And it's quite a bit smaller than our, our model because our model started with the default cube, which is supposed to be about one one meter high as far as the blender units go. These are, from what I've gathered, these each square is supposed to be a meter, so this, this groundhog is actually a, <laughs> a giant right now if, if we were to go by that scale, but we're not gonna go by that scale. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode for this armature and go ahead and scale him up about like so to where he's about the same height. And then I wanna come over here to our object data settings over here, object data, and go to x-ray. So we can see, you can see it through our model. And then another thing I wanna do is set it to be B-bones because I personally prefer B-bones to all the other options unless you know we're going with the shapes. But um, anyway, so let's now go to the object settings here and come down here to display and where it says textured, go ahead and click on that and change it to wire. And then we'll be able to edit it a little bit easier this way. So. Now, one thing we need to do before we start messing with it at all is go ahead and turn on over here in your toolbox uh, under armature options, go ahead and turn on X axis mirror. So then anything that we do on the left side automatically copies over to the right side, so as you can see. So let's get a few things ironed out here. Let's actually, first thing I wanna do is grab all of the hand bones. And for some reason I grabbed that one too, but I wanna go control alt S and I'm gonna scale these bones down to where they're quite a bit skinnier. There we go, like so. Maybe a little, even a little bit more. 
There we go. Okay, it looks like skeleton bones rather now instead. So, uh, our model has not the typical five hands like a real person would have, but not five fingers, uh, but he has three fingers and a thumb. So we need to get rid of this finger here. So we'll just select all those guys, make sure it didn't select anything else. No, good. Go ahead and delete those. Okay. And also, we don't have the correct amount of joints in each finger. We only have two instead of the typical three that you would find in a real hand. So we can go ahead and get rid of all of these tips on the bones here. Oops, did that work? Yeah, okay. I hit the wrong thing there for a second. Go ahead and delete that one too. Okay. Now, let's go about getting this lined up with our model. So we'll just select the whole hand, move it over there. I think we're still rotating around the 3D cursor, so control comma. There we go. Let's move that up here. Also straightened out there, and then just kind of just rotate it. Let's go to our top view, move it back here. Scale it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's grab the elbow, move it into place, and the shoulder. Just kind of just get everything lined up with our model. Okay, get the wrist to pull up here too. Okay, so let's let's work on getting these fingers lined up the way they're supposed to be. So let's grab that. This kind of the, these bones here are basically for the palm so you can you can uh, curl the fist around if you if you're making a tight fist it'll curve around instead of just being a, a flat you know flat palm you can actually curve it around so let's go to our the top view of the hand not the actual top view of the global scene but uh, just the hand so we can get these fingers lined up accordingly now it's going to look good in this view but once we <laughs> once we rotate over to the to the side of it, it'll probably not be lined up at all. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. Now, like I said, that's not that bad. Still needs to be fixed. Let's grab all of these segments there, drag them down so they're in the right place. Rotate it around a little bit so it follows the hand. There we go. Okay. Now one thing I noticed while I was rotating around is sometimes you put a ground plane in there, uh, it likes to distract you. So let's go ahead and hide that. It'll still render out. Um, if we look in our render, you can see it, the ground plane. It makes for a better render. It actually needs to come up a little bit. Look like he's hovering in the air a tiny bit, but we'll worry about that later. Let's get back into getting these fingers lined up. Okay, so we got the, the main base joint there of each finger. Let's get the the rest of them. This can kind of get tedious, but it's a lot faster than building your own rig from scratch. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I like building rigs, but man, they can get tedious. Okay, so those fingers are pretty well set. Let's get this thumb guy working in tandem as well. Okay, I think that'll work. Now, one thing we need to also work on are is the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the the axis rotation, and that affects which which way. The, the bone rotates once you start posing it. So the way we turn on the visible axis, go to our object data, come over here to axis. There we go. And we need to straighten up the fingers mostly, have the z-axis pointing down. So let's grab, actually tell you what, let's just grab all of these. Did I hit something by accident? No, okay, <laughs> I never can tell. Let's grab all of these bones here and control N, I'm going to recalculate the roll of the z-axis. So every z-axis is going to point up, which we still need to fix, but this this gets them all uniform. So before, you know, some of them were rotated a little bit, some of them were a little bit more, but this gets them all rotated correctly 
in line with each other. So I'm going to control R so I can rotate them around, put that Z axis back down. There we go. I'm looking at this finger here. Okay. Go ahead and deselect. Actually, let's deselect everything. Grab this one and maybe just a little bit. And then the pinky. It's about right. And then let's look at the thumb over here. Get that rotated back. There we go. Okay. And this guy, that's about right too. All right. Let's get that hand straightened up just a little bit. Okay. And let's rotate the forearm a little bit more, like so. And then the upper arm. There we go. Okay. Now let's get down here on the feet. Now, um,. This rig is based on a normal human model, but like I said before, when we were building this guy, his, his, he's kind of on a tippy-toe type of thing. So his, his actual foot here never actually touches the ground. So uh, we're going to have to modify the look and feel of this a little bit. He's going to be walking on his tiptoes, but uh, that's not a big issue. At least not, not right now, but I'll, I'll show you later what the issue might be. So let's get this lined up here. This is his knee and the top of his thigh, about right there. Go to our front view, line that up over there, and over there. Let's get every, everything all lined up correctly. Okay. Now we just have to basically get everything lined up according to the joint, because we're going to use the rigify feature to actually get, you know, all the constraints and everything added on real quick. So one thing I'm going to try, I don't know if it's going to actually make a difference at all later on, but uh, I would like for this toe bone, since we have individual toes, I don't want to go in and worry about doing individual bones for each toe, because, you know, he's not going to be, you know, drawing pictures or typing on a keyboard or anything with his toes. So basically we just need them to, you know, rotate up and down and they can do it all at the same time. It'll be fine. Now, if you want to get detailed, you can go in and add bones for each one. But for these purposes, this should be fine. So what I'm going to do is I want to make that thicker or wider so it encompasses all the toes. So I'm going to go control alt S to change the thickness. And then I'm going to hit X twice. So it so it scales it along its x-axis, along its local x-axis. I'm just going to build that, bring that in so it fits it a little better. There we go. And just about there. I think that'll work. Now let's work on the spine. Get that all lined up. This is actually going to be the hip area. So let's put that about in its place. Grab this one. Put it down about right there. This is a this is hip, spine, and then this chest ribs region. Grab the tip of that, and there we go, put it down. This is his neck. Have it rotate about, usually right under the ears is typically about where the, uh, the head rotates, the base of the skull. So I think that will work for the most part. Now, you could go ahead and apply this rig to our, to our uh, our mesh and then go in and add all your constraints manually and that'll work just fine but there's a quicker way you can also use which is, goes in tandem with this meta rig feature here and that is to uh, rigify it so just go to rigify generate rig and it creates a whole separate rig boom and lines it up you know perfectly on top of it so what we want to do now is grab that original rig there and we could probably go ahead and delete it, but I'll just leave it in here for you guys to kind of study if you are to get the downloadable content for this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to put it on another layer. Let's put it over here. And I want to grab this this uh, this rig, excuse me, and move it also to its own layer, but I'm going to put it right here below. I like to keep my all my mesh on this first layer and then all my rigs on this layer, so all the rigs that I'm actually using. Okay, so we hold down shift, turn on both of those layers, and let's grab this and turn on x-ray for it as well. Now, let's go to pose mode. Okay, now he's pretty well set. Now we just have to apply it to our model. So let me grab the model first, and then shift, hold down shift, and select 
any of the bones, just any of them will be fine. Then we're going to go control P and set the parent to armature to form with automatic weights and boom. Now you didn't really see anything change, but if we were to grab a bone and move it, you can see that the model now follows along. Now, uh, you notice, I know, I know what you're thinking. You're noticing that, that that fur is not following along. Like Dave, the fur is not following. Well, it's an easy thing to fix. Just grab your mesh model, go over to your armature settings, and let's collapse all these guys. And let's move the armature all the way up to the top. So as long as it comes first, the particle system will be after it, and it will also be applied or, you know, controlled by the rig. So there we go. Now, some of the beauty of this rig that Nathan made is not just the looks, but the functionality. It has all of the constraints and everything built right into it. And say, if you're like me, and I know I am, <laughs> uh, I like to animate with mostly inverse kinematics. Now you can turn on automatic inverse kinematics. If I go over here and turn on auto IK, I can grab the hand and, well, wrong hand, there we go, and move that. And it kind of works just like, you know, the, uh, the IK chains that you might create. But you can also set that up over here. And at the very bottom, when you add the rigify, it adds this properties panel to your to, to, to your properties panel. And you can turn on and off the IK versus the FK, which is the forward uh, kinematics, which is just basically grabbing one bone and then rotating it like so. So say I want to do that. I'm going to turn this FK IK hand for the for this hand. Turn it all the way up to one, which is all the way to IK. Do the same thing on this side. Okay. And now since I don't really need these forward kinematics bones taking up space here, I can turn that layer off so they're not visible. So let's say arm left, forward kinematics, go ahead and hold down shift and click that and it'll turn it off. Do the same thing on the right side. And there we go. So now we grab the hand, move it around, rotate it down. And it's also pretty handy for here on the fingers. The way you bend the fingers, I mean, you can bend the whole finger just by rotating that around, but if you want to curl them, you scale that, and you can see it it scales the finger down. So that's kind of cool. And then you can rotate it to, you know, whatever. And then, like I said before, those hand bones were to control the, the curl of the palm, so you can rotate like that, or rotate it around. Well, I guess you can't rotate it, but you can move it up and down like so. So, so that's that. So let's put him in a quick little pose here. I want to copy all the, the, the poses here for this. Let's make that. Well, if I can grab the right one, there it is. A little looser of a grip there that he's just kind of got a blank empty-handed pose there. Oops, wrong one, there we go. I want to copy, I don't want to have to do that on the other side, so let's select all those there. Come down here to the bottom of the screen and go click on that. It copies that pose and I'm going to paste it to the opposite side. So let me scroll out so you can watch it. It's going to even move it into the same place, mirrored. So paste that, boom, puts it right down there. So, it's pretty cool. Now there's uh, some of the things that are, it's automated, but you still need to touch it up a little bit. And that is some of the weight painting. So let's click on our model. And for right now, let's just turn off that particle system so it's not eating any extra RAM or memory that we don't have or whatever. So uh, let me click, actually, before we do that, grab one of the bones, come over here to your object data. And we need to turn on the layer. These bones here are all just controllers. None of these bones that you're looking at actually deform the mesh. So we need to turn on the layer that does. And that's going to be this guy way over here. So just hold down shift, click on that, and you can see all these new bones pop up. So now we grab our model, go into weight paint. And if we right click on this bone here, 
Is it not the right one? I guess it's not. <laughs> Let's go back to object mode, grab the rig, and which one is it going to be? I think it's that one, actually. Yes, here we go. Let's grab that bone just to be sure. Come down here. There it is. Grab the bone, go to the item name right here. It says DEF-head. That means it's a deformer. It's a deforming bone. As Nathan set it automatically up to automatically name all those bones. So it's not this guy here. It's this guy here. So that layer right there. So now we grab our model. Go back to weight paint. And you can, it's, the bone is already selected. And you can see it's only really affecting the very top of the head. And then it kind of just fades out. Now we can grab our paint paintbrush here, add, and just kind of paint over it, but that can get tedious and you might miss a few things there in the nooks and crannies. So one quick easy way, let's go to our side view, tab into edit mode, and select all these faces here on the head. Let me make sure you can, I'm getting the inside of it and the other side as well. So turn that uh, limit selection to visible, turn that off, and we'll go ahead and select all that again. There we go. Good, and we're going to go ahead and that this vertex group is already in the, it's, it's already selected here, so I'm going to hit assign, and it's going to assign all of these vertices that I have selected to this, to this vertex group with a weight of 1.0, which is 100%. So now when I tab back out and back into weight paint mode, you can see that the whole head is now affected by this bone. And let me grab the blur tool. I want to and let's come down here, X mirror is on, that's good. Okay, and now I wanna gently fade it into the neck instead of such a harsh transition, just kinda of paint that, set the strength up a little bit, let's kinda of blur that together there. And up in here as well. Okay, now select the neck. See, the neck is affecting a lot of the face and I don't want the neck to do that, I just want the neck to affect the neck. So let's do the same thing, let's have it edit mode, and neck is already selected here. And this time, instead of assigning it to that vertex group, we're gonna hit remove, and it's gonna remove all of those from that vertex group. So we tab back out, and you can see it is now not on there. But I would like to add a little bit to this group here. Let's kind of just paint along the neck here. There we go. And I think I accidentally grabbed a part, tiny part of that ear. There, oh, there we go, get that off of there. Okay, so um, you can go through each bone and make sure it's, you know, affecting everything that it should be. There, just kind of just touch it up and paint it in. There we go. Good. All right, everything looks in order other than, well, I'll tell you what, this belly, I guess you'd call it the, the spine bone, we need to increase its strength up a little bit more, I think. And I got part of that arm, it looked like. Yeah. Okay, back to add. And let's just come in here and clean this up. And probably might ought to should have added a bone for the tail, but uh, with this automatic rigging thing, I'm not sure it would have worked. I think I was just playing with it earlier today and I couldn't get it to work just right. So we'll just leave it as a stiff part. I'm gonna grab the hips, there we go, and add that to there as well. Let's see how the thighs are gonna act. Select the right one, there it is. Okay, I think all the other weights should be about right, so let's go ahead and come back out of weight paint mode. Grab our rig, come back over here, go ahead and turn that layer back off. And now, if I grab the head bone, rotate it around, you can see it looks pretty good. The eyeballs aren't following, obviously, because they are separate meshes. So I'll tell you what, um, in previous projects that I've worked on, I usually just grab the eyeballs, both of them, if I can grab it, the eyeball, there we go, that one, and that one. And then I just shift select the head bone, and I go control P, and I don't set it to parent with the automatic weights, I just set it to parent to the bone, and click that. But, like I said, I was playing with this earlier, and for some reason, the eyes are being affected strangely by that. So the way around that is to go ahead, let's go ahead and undo that. Okay. And this time we're going to shift select, we're going to go control P and go ahead and 
just make it part of the armature with automatic weights. And did it add it to both of those? Not for sure. Armature, yes. Armature, yes. So we should be all, well, for the most part. But I think we're probably going to have to do some weight painting, just like we did on the model itself. So we'll just grab those eyeballs. Let's go to, actually, you won't even know, need to go to weight paint mode. We can do it all from the vertex group, since it's only going to be affected by the one bone. Actually, you know what? We might want him to look around. So I'll tell you what, let's grab our our rig and tab into edit mode. And let's go ahead and add a couple of new bones here. And you know, maybe we'll go ahead and add a tailbone too. Let's put a 3D cursor right there where the eye is. And let's go Shift A, add a new bone, grab it, rename it, go to eyeball.l. There we go. Let's go to our side view. Grab the tip of it. I'm going to go Shift S, selection to cursor. Boom. Makes it like a the, the bone itself right now is like non-existent because it's so small. Each point is exactly at the same spot, so you don't have any length at all. But it's still selected. So I'm going to click on that arrow there and drag it forward. So now we have that eyeball bone right there. So good to go. And I want to copy that over to the other eye. So Shift D and then just drag it over. Get that lined up just right. There we go. Go ahead and rename it over here. Dot R. And there we go. And let's grab both of those new bones. And then we're going to shift select that head bone. Control P. And keep the offset. So now we tab out. Grab that head bone. You can see. I don't know if you can see it actually. Yeah. Okay, there they are. They move along with the head. So now what I want to do is grab each eyeball and it's got all these deformation bones on there or vertex groups and it doesn't need them it only needs the one for each eyeball so I'll tell you what I'm just gonna hit the minus button and get rid of all of the actually I think I can hit this down arrow and go delete all yes and then I can grab that one hit the down arrow delete all there we go now we need to add that vertex group of each eyeball to that it's still got the armature uh, modifier added so let's just zoom out of or Z out of uh, of wireframe view and let's go to weight paint and since this is the only bone there I'm just gonna right click on it and just 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 dash just to hit a dash just to get that weight on there and it adds automatically adds that bone to the vertex group so now I can tab into edit mode just select everything and since it's in the vertex group now go and assign boom makes it 100% part of that bone Come back out here, grab this eyeball, and grab it there. Do the same thing. Weight paint mode. Grab that bone, just dash it in there, tab in, select everything, assign. Tab out, good to go. So, one thing I want to do to this rig with these eyes is we need to make them, well, we can animate them individually, but again, automation is awesome and always fun. So let's go to our side view. And we're going to shift D, duplicate those guys, move them on the Y axis out front here. Keep going a little bit further. And we're going to call these, well, I guess we have to do it individually one at a time. Let's grab this one, call this one look at.l. And grab this one, look at.r. Okay, make sure they're in the same case and everything. Yes. Okay, now. One more thing with this look at thing. Let's go to our top view. I'm going to shift D again, and I'm going to drag it on the x-axis over to the middle. Then I'm going to scale it up. Then I'm going to grab both of these guys, and then shift select that last one, control P, keep the offset. So now these are parented to this. Move this around, and that follows suit. Now, Grab this, actually grab this bone first, shift select that bone, I'm going to go shift I, and it's going to add an IK to there, and it moves the whole thing forward, which is undesirable, so let's go to our bone settings right here, actually the bone constraint settings right there, and change the chain length to 1, and we're going to do the same thing on the other eye, grab the look at target first, shift select the eye, shift I, to active bone, good, chain length of 1. So now, since these look at targets, See the eyeball watching it? They're both following that, and they're both connected to this guy. Boom. You can move, rotate both eyes around at the same time. 
So now, if he wants to move his head, right now the eyeballs are following along, and it looks like it's not just the eyeballs that are affected by the head motion, it's just the eye sockets themselves. So, one thing we can do to make sure no other bones are affecting our eyelid and eye sockets is we can tab into edit mode and let's select that whole shebang there, the whole top eyelid. Scroll over here. Where is it at? Let's go to our vertex select. There's a way, there's a, excuse me, there's a setting over here that'll show you, show you what vertex groups those selected vertices are in. We'll just select one of them. There we go, vertex groups. So select all of them. And the, there it is. I don't know why I didn't see it before. So, um, looks like it's all set. It's only in the head vertex group. Good. The deformed head anyways. Good. Good. Now let's select the eye socket. Hmm. Well, this is a head scratcher. Okay, that one's got the deformed shoulder in it. So let's come over to the object data and let's just tell you what. Let's select this whole area right here. The whole head, actually. Let's deselect that part on the neck there. And what was it? Deformed shoulder. Let's find that guy right there. So let's remove all those from there. And while we're at upper arm too, upper arm there. Okay. Deformed shoulder right. Where is that one? There it is. Remove that upper arm. Okay, now, hmm, for some reason, perhaps the eyeballs are still, let me try something here. Let's go to our object settings here. Okay, the parent right now is the rig, which is correct, but it's acting as an object parent. We need it to be an armature parent. I think it moved it around somewhere. Moved it over there, which is odd. Grab this other eyeball and do the same thing, armature. There we go. And let's grab our rig now and clear out all rotations. Huh, that is odd. I'll tell you what, let me pause recording and kind of play with this for a little bit, see if I can't figure out why it's doing that, and then I'll get right back to you. So be right back. Okay, I figured it out. And kind of kind of simple, really, but it's understandable how I messed it up. But uh, the problem was, when I created these eyeball bones to attach the eyes to, I parented them to this head controller. Now, what they need to be parented to is the deform head. So, just tab back into Edimo, turn that layer back on, grab both of those eye bones, shift select the deform head bone, control P, and I already did this, so you'll have, if you go control P, you'll have the option to uh, disconnect or, or, or whatever the option says. So, uh, so that, so that is the way to fix that. So there you go. Now the eyes are falling just fine. And I'm really liking the way this guy deforms when he's moving around. It kind of looks pretty good, I think. So, um, okay. So that's, that's how you get the, the cool rig going on. Let's get that. Maybe it's still in the buffer. Yes from where I copied the hand pose earlier still in the in the copy buffer. So let me go ahead and save this while I'm ahead. <laughs> now, uh, the weirdness I was talking about before with the with the feet. Um, since we move the the heel of the foot up here to this the top of the tippy toe foot, that's where his or uh, well, oh yeah. Uh, same thing with the hands. The the feet and legs have the option for inverse kinematics also, and or forward kinematics. So let's come down here, have that one selected. Go ahead and turn it all the way to IK. And we'll go ahead and shift deselect the leg.lfk. There we go. go ahead and grab this guy all the way over and deselect that one. Okay, so now when we grab that, you can move his legs like so. So it works fine. Normally, 
I guess if we tabbed into edit mode, we could grab these guys. Turn on x-axis mirror so it does both sides at the same time. Move those controllers down there. And maybe rotate them a little bit too so they are flat on the ground. And maybe we'll scale them down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So, now what I was talking about with the weight paints. Now you can see there's obviously some issue on the side here. So let's grab the model, go into weight paint mode, and I guess we need to turn on the, the layer that has the deform bones in it. There we go. Grab the model, weight paint, grab these. Okay, yeah, we need to clean that up. We got the blur already selected here, so let's just blur this in here. Maybe grab the belly here and add, add that to it so it stays put better. And maybe you just deselect some of these. Oh yeah, we we're gonna make a tailbone too, weren't we? Let's go ahead and do that. I said, I guess. Now, back to object mode. Let's grab tab in here. Put our 3D cursor right there at the tip of the tail, the base of the tail, I guess. There we go. We're gonna shift A, add a new bone, drag it down to there. And just go ahead and name this tail. There we go. And let's, uh, we want to parent it to the the hips, probably. So is this the deformed hips? Yes. So grab that, shift select that, control P, keep the offset. There we go. So now grab our model, weight paint mode, and select the tailbone there and add, and just paint that on. So now when he rotates that, rotates the tail. And it's not rotating it fully because the vertices of the tailbone are still on the you know attached to the hip. So let's grab that one, subtract, kind of clean that off a little bit. Same thing as the belly. Let me clean that off here. There we go. So now when I grab the tail, move it around, it should do a lot better. Okay. Now I think that works pretty good. I think we're pretty well set on the rigging of our little fella here. Grab his hand there, go ahead and paste that pose there. And maybe rotate this out a little bit. Maybe give him a little bit of a rebel, re rebellious attitude kind of pose there. He's like, I don't care. I see my shadow, you know, I don't care. Let's bring the kid here, I don't care. Okay, so. Maybe move him over a little bit. Let's grab his hands as well. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Now, what is a groundhog without some ground? While I still have a little bit of time, I know it's running a little late, but uh, let's add a little bit uh, of, of a grassy knoll for him to have came out of and, and is looking at. So let's go to a new layer. Let's turn on this layer right here. And I want to shift A. I'm going to add a, let's add a UV sphere. And I want to give it a few, well, actually, you know what? Let me, let me undo that. Let me delete. Ah, if I can grab it, delete. Yes, there we go. Shift A, and I'm going to add a plane. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode. And I'm going to subdivide it few times, quite a few times. Let's do, eh, seven will be fine. And now one thing I want to use is this little mesh transform to sphere. There we go. And you drag your mouse, it turns it into a circular shape, which uh, actually is not, <laughs> didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's get rid of three quarters of this. Just select these guys and these guys. I'm going to go ahead and delete those vertices. I'm going to add a mirror modifier. There we go. And I'm going to turn it to also the Y axis. And now I'm going to grab these points here and let's turn on our proportional editing. Drag that up. And I want to round this out. Now, yeah, I could, let's go ahead and turn on clipping too. I could uh, put a, you know, a circle in here, but I would like to have this nice topology of a, of a plane. 
I want it to be round, but I want, you know, I don't want the triangles and stuff. So I just want nice, nice circular shape with good topology. Okay. So I'm tab back in. Let's go ahead and, you know, tab out, go ahead and apply that mirror. So there we go. Select everything. I'm going to go ahead and E to extrude and drag it up on the Z axis. Uh, probably about right there. Maybe one more time. Z axis, maybe scale it down just a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to add a multi resolution. Subdivide it. Uh, let's do it twice. We're going to go into sculpt mode. Come up here, grab the brush, and I'm just going to draw in here just some random, random shapes just to kind of give it a nice ground dirt. And then on over here on the back corner, I'm going to build it way up and then come in here. And we're going to put a hole here. So let's do that. Let's go to subtract there and let's put in a little hole where our groundhog has came out of the ground. There we go. Actually, one thing I want to do, this looks like it's eating through itself. So let's tab into edit mode and let me select, let's go to our side view, select all these vertices down here. Actually, I just want the faces. So just select that and then go to face select. Delete the faces, tab back out, and maybe we'll grab this bottom edge here, move it way down. So there we go. Okay, so we're going to put our groundhog stand in here, and he's kind of looking into this hole that he just came out of. Uh oh. Hmm. All the the tools are working inversely. I'm trying to add and it's subtracting. So the way to fix that, tab into edit mode, select everything, control N to flip our normals, tab back out. And it did just that, it flipped the normals. So do it again. Right. Well, this isn't working the way I wanted to, I guess because it's multi-res. Let's go ahead and kill that, add a new one. There we go, subdivide a couple of times. Same thing, just some random ground here, build one side of it up. Kind of just try to make like a snow globe base type of thing, just a little presentation piece. Oh, there we go. Let's grab the smooth tool, kind of smooth some of this up. And I think that'll work. Now, back into object mode, preview. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and apply that. And then we're going to go to smooth shading. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier. Just one, don't need two of them because it has a crazy amount of vertices already. So here we go. Let's do a couple of things here to make it look pretty. I'm going to go to the UV image editor and go ahead and kill out the render there. There we go. And go back here to our 3D viewport, tab into edit mode, select everything, U, unwrap. There we go. Unwraps our UV coordinates there. So we can come in and texture paint some dirt and such on here. Brush, there we go. And need to change the color. There we go. Well, it's not wanting to paint the texture. So. Oh, I guess I need to give it a new, an image first before I can paint onto it. So there we go. Now, and let's turn off all these settings here like we did in part three. And let's go ahead and paint that on there. Okay. And we can play with a few different settings here if you want to give the dirt some variation in tone. Make the brush a little smaller too. Just kind of maybe paint really dark inside the hole to give the illusion of further depth than there is actually there. Oh, 
Okay, so I think that'll work for the most part, just a generic ground with a hole in it there. And let's go ahead and save this image. Save, where is it at? Save as image, there we go. And we'll say ground dirt, there we go. Go ahead and save that. And then we'll come out of texture paint mode, go to our material settings, create a new one, call this one ground. And let's give it a texture here. And we'll say image or movie. Come down to image, hit the little thumbnail. Untitled, and we'll go ahead and name that dirt. Collapse that, mapping to UV. Okay, and there we go. We need to turn it sheen way down. I like so, and hardness down as well. And then tell you what we can do to add a little bit more detail to it is let's add a, a cloud. There we go. Cloud texture to it. And I don't need to mess with the colors. But let's give it further depth and maybe play with, let's give it, let's try Voronoi and let's go to both preview there. Turn off color. We want it to affect the geometry. There we go. It gives it a nice cellular look there, except I want to go opposite there. There we go. A little bit more. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Maybe the size is a little bit smaller. Yeah, that looks good. So, if we were to render now, let's grab that first layer there, and tell you what, let's grab the camera and the light, and I like to give them their very own special layer myself. So I usually put it way over here on the far right, have them, the cameras and the light, all the lights on that layer there. So I turn off that first layer, turn on this layer, look through our camera, and let's make our dirt hill a little bit bigger. Maybe rotate it around a little bit. And let's see what it looks like. So we render that out. And it looks like a pile of dirt, <laughs> like a mud ball. May, uh, I think the bump mapping might be a little too strong. So let's set that up a little bit. Let's just go negative one. I'm sure that'll probably look fine. Yeah, that's good. That'll work. Now, uh, before we finish with our ground, I don't want just mud and dirt. I want some grass on there. So let's go to our material settings here and get a new uh, kind of like we did on the fur, a new material setup for that. I'll call it grass. There we go. And let's come over here to our textures. Create a new one. And this one's going to be a blend. And we're not going to do a transparency blend like we did for the fur because grass doesn't need to be soft. It just needs to be, you know, it needs to have color. So we're going to go color and click here in the alpha settings there, turn it all the way up, brighten it up, kind of a dark green fading to, click on the white one there, more of a yellowish bright green, a little bit darker there. Okay, and then the mapping needs to be strand particle. Now if we go to viewport there, grass shading, you can see it's dark at the bottom, light at the top. There we go. Come over back to our material, material settings, come down to strand settings. The tip we want to be real small, triangular shaped grass. The root, let's make that you know, let's make a three. Have nice thick grass blades. There we go. So now, particle settings, add a new one. Emitter, go to hair. Okay, and it's coming out all over the place. Tell you what, let's do. Let's just put grass on the very top, and then we'll have, like on the sides, we'll just have it straight mud, straight dirt. So, what I also think what I'd like to do is, let me grab, make a sharper edge there on the edge, on the top lip of it, basically. And let me go Control E edge slide and let's move that up and maybe grab this these loops here scale them down a little bit maybe one more loop in there control r add that up let's turn on proportional editing it's already on good and let's scale that out a little bit oh there we go okay back into edit mode let's go ahead and collapse this window we don't need this anymore Make sure it's saved. Save image. All set. Good. Collapse that. And now let's say everything below this selection, it, we don't want any any dirt on it or any grass on it at all. So let's create a seam there. Control E. Mark a seam. And then we can just select one of these faces. Control L. Select all that. Come to our vertex groups. Create a new one. Let's say grass. Okay. And now, since we have that selected, we don't want it in this vertex group, we're going to select Inverse and Assign. 
Now, you might notice a problem with that. Let me turn this. Actually, let's go down here in our in our, ver our particle settings under density. Let's go to grass. Good. And let's come all the way up here. Turn on advanced. Under velocity, let's set that way, way shorter. About like so. And then jittering it a little bit. And maybe scroll down here to random. Just give it a little bit of randomness. There we go. Collapse that. Go down to collapse that, collapse that. Render. We want to use the second material, which will be the grass, and give it a randomness as well. Okay, and also strand render and B spline. And children, interpolate. It'll be perfectly fine. There we go. It looks like a nice grassy null. So if we were to render this one out, it probably looked pretty decent, I would think. First guess. That actually, <laughs> I'm impressed with that. <laughs> it looks pretty good, I think. Looks like carpet or so, something. But uh, we don't want grass inside the hole. We just want it, you know, on, around the outside. So let's tab back out and let's go to our weight paint. Okay, go to our top view and make sure we have subtract turned on. Yes. And we're just going to click in here and just start. Set the strength up a little higher. Just start getting rid of the grass there inside that hole. Maybe a little bit on the outside, on the top edge of it. Okay, so that's probably good. Actually, accidentally hit that one there. Let me add that back on there. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so that should look pretty decent, I would think. Let's go ahead and render it out. And it looks, I'm happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's get our little groundhog in place. Turn on that layer there. Okay, we need to grab our little grassy null, scale it up quite a bit. Maybe about like so. Drag it down to where Mr. Groundhog there is standing on the grass. Maybe move it over about right there. And let's Alt H, because remember we have that ground plane. And let's move that down below our little display box here. Maybe make it a tiny bit bigger. And let's turn on our armature layer. Grab the main controller there. Rotate it around. Okay, and let's kind of position him to where he's standing outside of his little, little hidey hole. You know, since it's winter time, you might even go in here and you know throw some snow or something on there. But I like I like the grass myself. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a fan of winter time and snow. Maybe he's looking over. Maybe he's looking for a shadow, but it's on the other side of him. There's all kinds of stories you can come up with for something like this. You know what? I'm going to change the light to where it's pointing where he is seeing a shadow and kind of put him in a scared pose. Like, oh no! What is that? I've eaten too much over the winter. I'm fat. <laughs> That's what he's scared of. He's not scared of a shadow itself. Like, ah, oh, it's, just, it's just a shadow. It's the fact that he's gotten so fat over the winter time. Okay, so let's grab our lamp, move it over, rotate that around, move it over to this side. I like that. Now, let's take a render, set our camera up here. And one thing I want to do before I render this guy out is to change the background. Right now, the world setting is just a plain gray if we look through our render. Just a plain gray. I'd like to give it a little bit of a little more interesting look. Turn on blend sky, set the horizon color there all the way to white. And then the zenith color here, let's make that just a soft gray. So we're kind of fading in from a soft gray to white there at the bottom. So now 
Go ahead and save this bad boy. And after 50, <laughs> 55 minutes, maybe we'll have something that's pretty to look at. So I'll go ahead and pause the recorder so you don't have to sit there and wait for it to render, and we'll be right back. Okay, and there we go. We have our groundhog looking at his shadow. And oh no, he's kind of scared of it. So, anyways. So that's going to be all for this groundhog set, uh, set uh, series here. So hopefully you had as much fun with it as I did. I really like the end result there. So hope you guys have a lot of fun with it and, and come up with some cool renders and, and put them up here on the page. They're blender cookies so I can, so I can see them. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.